Welcome to the Life Construction Broadcast. So good of you to join us. Let's go ahead to the Lord with some prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, it is your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We count on you. We depend on you. And we thank you, Lord, that you never let us down. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Get out your Bibles. And let's go ahead and make this confession. I believe this is God talking to me. I believe this is God talking to me. I believe everything in it. I believe everything in it. 
everything that comes out of it everything that comes out of it will affect my life will affect my life for the better for the better this is god's will this is god's manifested will manifested in my life in my life amen and amen, amen. turn with me in your bibles to uh, galatians 2 and 20 we're going to go over some of the scriptures that we looked at on sunday and uh, galatians 2 20 is our jump off point it is our key verse it says this I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so we've been talking about the subject of living in, living a resurrected life, living a resurrected life. And so in this resurrected life, the area that we talked about, we're going to go right back into the area of giving. Sowing is a part of it. Uh, let's take a look at Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, 2 to 5. 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, 2 to 5. Chapter 8, 2 to 5. If you remember, Paul is, uh, is getting ready to bring a gift to a church. And there was this one particular church that wanted to sow. And Paul was trying to stop them because he knew uh, that they had been, uh, it was a struggle for them to go ahead and sow. Uh, this is what it says. Verse 2 says, how that in a great trial of affliction, uh, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abound unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear them record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take unto us the fellowship of the, man of, of the ministering to the saints. So, Paul was looking in the natural, and he said, look, you know, y'all y'all need this. And then they said, no, 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 no. You take this, and we're going to sow this. And look at what he says in verse 5. Verse 5 is the key. It said, and this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. See, once you give yourself to the, to the Lord, then everything else is all secondary. Uh, but in the natural, sometimes, and, and I've been there too, uh, people that I know are struggling, they come and they say, look, pastor, I want to sow this into you. And then on the inside, you want to say, nah, you need this. But I would be doing them a disservice. So I say, I receive it and I loose your harvest in Jesus' name. And so as people, we have to tell the enemy no. No. Because the word says this is the way that we are to, just like Paul. Paul said, you know what? The reason why you're able to, to do this is because you've given yourself to the Lord. See, when you give yourself to the Lord, who am I to stop somebody's seed? For me to look in the natural, especially after I say, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Stop looking in the natural. If it, they have a heart to give, God is sending them to me for a reason. Because he, well, I am flowing in my agenda. I am flowing in what I'm supposed to do. I am flowing in my assignment. And according to the word, if I'm flowing in my assignment, God is going to send people to go ahead and partake in that flowing. And then as a result, then he's going to bless them. Because just like in Abraham, those that bless Abraham are going to be blessed. Those that are blessing are looking after those that are connected properly and flowing in their, in their assignment. It's my responsibility to go ahead and receive that. So it is with Paul. Amen. And can we read that in the um, Passion? Of course. Hey, hallelujah. Life Construction Church, how are you doing? Glory to God. Hey, um, I'm going to start at the second verse. It says, for even during a season of severe difficulty and tremendous suffering, they became even more filled with joy. From the depths of their extreme poverty, superabundant joy overflowed into an act of extra extravagant 
generosity. When you think about something that's extravagant, you think about it being large, being awesome, being phenomenal. But it was extravagant generosity. For I can verify that spontaneous gave, not only according to their means, but far beyond what they can even afford. They actually begged us for the privilege of sharing in this ministry of giving to God's holy people who are living in poverty. They expected our, five says, they exceeded our expectations by first dedicating themselves fully to the Lord and then to us according to God's pleasure. One of the things that I got out of this is it is so important that you dedicate yourself first to the Lord. That is the key thing. You, money, money won't have you if you dedicate yourself to the Lord. Um, and, and that's what was going on with these people. They wasn't concerned about their money because they were all connected to the Father. They knew that the Father was their source of supply. When you understand that God is my source of supply, it's easy for me to give. It's easy for me to sow because I know where, my, where the money comes from. It didn't come from me. It didn't come from my job. It, didn't come, it comes from God. And if you expect God to be your source of supply, it's easy to sow. And um, knowing that and understanding that, that is a good example in five, in, the, in chapter five, it, it is a good example of showing that money did not have them. So many challenges with money is because people have allowed money to take them over. Um, they are controlled by their money. Everything that they do is about money. And, and then they tell you the church, they nothing about money. But what the problem is, they're the, is they, they're the one that have the issues with the money. Um, uh, one of the things, too, is a true sower is not concerned about how much money they have or where the next money going to come from. A true sower, knowing that money just keep on coming. When you're a true sower, it just keep on flowing. It just keep on coming. We're not concerned. Pastor said on Sunday, you know, see my wife? She just said, give it all. Just give it. Just give it. Just give it. You know, we, we'll be in meetings, and I'll say, let it roll. Let Just go ahead and just sow it. Because I know this life, this walk, this Christian walk, that we, this journey that we started many years ago, that we are living a life by faith, but it's because we've sown some seed that we're able to reap the harvest even now. We're reaping a harvest even now because of seed that was sown many, many years ago. And, and constantly sowing, constantly sowing, and not concerned about when we get back. Well, you sowed everything that was in the checkbook. That's okay. Uh, no matter how many times we've gone places and I say, just give it all. When we get back, always had money at home, always had money left over. So understanding that, that you have to dedicate yourself fully to the Lord to even comprehend that then money won't have you. When you dedicate yourself fully to the Lord, money won't have you. You will control the money. And, and what happens is you yourself you get hooked, you get stuck in how I'm going to pay this bill, how I'm going to do this, and you, you're thinking of your ways of thinking. How am I going to pay my bill? Well, see, that's not my concern because I'm a tither, number one. I sow, number two. So I'm not concerned about how my bill is going to get paid because God made a promise to me, and that promise, I, I'm holding them to the promise. And when, when your mind is, is stuck on that, when your mind is fully persuaded that if I sow, I'm going to reap. If you sow money, you're going to reap money. So many times. Uh, you can't tell people, when, when money has a person, you can't tell them what to do with their money. I can remember uh, my kids, it was, it's been several years ago. I want to say, ooh, 10, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, we were having a family meeting. And my boys, you know, that we were discussing some stuff. And uh, one of my boys, he was doing pretty good with his money. And the other one, he, they both were doing pretty good with their money. It's been several years ago. 
but the other one was kind of holding on to his money. And, you know, he was holding on. He had his little plan already stretched out. You know, what, you know he's a planner. I got this, I got this, I got that going on. And, and, and the other one, which was the older one, was telling him, say, listen, you ought to do this with your money. Since you got this money, you ought to do this. The young one looked at him and said, don't tell, don't tell me what to do with my money, buddy. <laughs> Tell me what to do with my money, buddy. And so many people, when it comes to your money, you don't want nobody to tell you nothing. And, and you wonder why you, you stuck right in the same position that you were in before. What God gave us a principle. He gave us a principle to follow. Tithes and offering. He gave us that principle. And it's, it's up to us to follow through. It's up to us to trust him at his word. And, and it all falls down to a lack of trust. It all falls down to fear. He's going to talk about in, in let's go to 2 Kings. And in, in one of the 1 Kings, 1 Kings 17. Now, uh, while you're getting to 1 Kings 17, uh, I want you to understand something. Uh, as she was talking, uh, I, I, I think it's important for me to explain to you that we live a lifestyle of giving. We are disciplined in the way that we run our household. We, we, when our finances come in, we make certain that we do what we're supposed to do because we set aside the tenth, and we don't live a lifestyle that's going to hurt us from our sowing. That has always been first and foremost. Uh, there have been times where we were uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 to 5, where we were there. But we sold and they honored and they would receive us because we just wanted to do something. So often people are, they're discouraged because they feel like they need to do this amount. No, no. You start where you are. Amen. Be a disciplined person. Don't just start throwing all your money all over the place. Uh, so it's very important for you to understand that. If you're going to live this life and you want to sow, mm -hmm. it's important for you to go so ahead and live a disciplined life. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it, there, when God gives you seed, some of that is to sow, some of that is to consume. Amen. You have to live that disciplined life. Amen. And I was going to say with that, um, God will give you instructions. You seed know, one of the seed always come with instructions. God will give you instructions on when to sow and how to sow. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. You just don't give all your money. You have to understand and ask the Holy Spirit, should I sow this? What, what's the amount? Holy Spirit, now what's the amount should I sow? And he will tell you. The Holy Spirit will give you the answer every single time. He will give you the wisdom to sow. And, and sometimes he'll talk to you and, and then he'll talk to the spouse and he'll say, oh yeah, let's, let's go ahead and sow that amount. You know, sometimes he'll talk to one or the other. But, but, but when you begin to sow, always sow with instruction. Always understand that it, when you hear from the Holy Spirit, he will give you instructions on sowing. Amen. Now in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Kings chapter 17, we're going to start our reading at verse 9. Uh, give you a little backdrop. There's a drought going on and the Lord had been taking care of the prophet. The prophet actually was laying and he was living by a brook and the ravens would bring him bread and meat twice a day and he would drink from the brook. So he didn't have to go anywhere. But then the brook dried up and the Lord gave him instructions. And then as we're reading this, I want you to understand that he is showing up not because of him. He's showing up because of the widow woman. Verse 9 said, well, let me get 8 to it. It said, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So the first thing you got is the Lord's giving them instructions step by step. This is what I need you to do. This is where I need you to go. And oh, by the way, I've already commanded a widow woman to take care of you. Well, in the natural, you're thinking, okay, this woman must be loaded. She must have a whole lot. She's going to be able to take care of me when I get there. And then we get to verse 10 
It said, so he arose and he went to, Zod, uh, to Zarephath. And when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So he sees, and I don't think she's loaded. But you know what? I'm still going to be obedient. Uh, so often, we are moved by what we see. Amen. And when we move by what we see, we short circuit what God wants to do in our lives and in the lives of the people that he sent us for. Amen. He sent her there. He sent, God sent the prophet to the widow woman for a specific purpose. And so she's there, she's gathering. He asked her for some water in verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. So she didn't say anything about the water. Then she turned and then she's going. Then after that, oh, by the way, bring me a little, bring me a little morsel of bread too. She just, she lost it at verse 12. Come on. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in, dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Now, let's take a, a moment and examine her. Let's look at her. Now, the first thing he asked for water. She says nothing. Because remember, the Bible said that the Lord had commanded her. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the Lord came when things were plentiful. Things were good. And so now things are not so good. Things are tight. See, that's the time where you really begin to sow. See, so often we're so from our, our, abundance. our abundance. But then when things get tight, what are you going to do then? Mm -hmm. We stop so, tithing. Yeah, put it we away. Lord, the Lord understands. Yeah, we stop tithing. And so here, the, here she is. And so now it's, it's yeah, make me this. And so she said, look, look, let me explain something, man of God. I don't have it. I just don't have it. In fact, I'm only here. This is our last meal. This is our final meal. I'm going to make this. Me and my son going to eat it. And after that, we gone. We dead. Look at the cheeky prophet. Look at what the cheeky prophet said. <laughs> and Elijah said unto her, fear not, first thing. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and thy son. See, this man of God was so connected. He ignored everything he saw and all he did was he hinged on the word that the Lord gave. I've commanded a wonder woman to sustain you. Now you remember when his experience with the ravens prepared him for this experience here. If God can feed me with birds, surely he's going to do something miraculous here. He's about to do something big. And so he refused to look at where the widow woman was. And he looked beyond that. You want to tackle anything before we finish? Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, most likely, whenever um, you go, whenever something great is going to happen, most of the time, anyways, you're going to experience some tough times. Use it through those tough times. There's always some blessings on the other side. But he gave her. She she was fearful. Yeah. So the first thing happened. The first thing happened to us is we we full of fear, especially when we're. We're saying, oh, I'm going to trust God. And then as soon as I trust God, do not, as soon as I make my confession, oh, I'm going to give this. You know how many times that we have said we're going to sow a seed? You know, you may have been gone. You may be involved in church, your church. You may have, they may have a building project or something going on in your ministry or whatever. And you've committed to, I'm going to sow this seed. And then as soon as you sow the seed, your husband loses his job. Uh, as soon as you, as soon as you make the commitment that you're going to do it, mm -hmm. something catastrophic happens to where he's like, "Oh man!" And I just it. said I was going to do that. Or you may have promised somebody you was going to do something, and then it's like, "Oh no, I can't do it." Fear attacks. When you put your mouth out there, and and you have to know that if God told you to do it, He's going to perform. He is going to produce because God is not a liar. Yeah. So fear attacked her first. 
But right after that, he said, fear not. But then he gave her instructions. Yeah. He gave her instructions. So instructions always come with a seed. It always comes, and you have to you have to ignore fear because fear would fear is going to come. There's times fear have attacked us, but we said nope. That's not what that's not what God promised us. And when fear when fear comes, or when money has you, when money uh, when money has when money is in control of you is is a is a better way of saying it. You can't hear God's instructions. You can't even hear because you have that you have that in your mind that you're thinking, how am I going to make my ends meet? So when God and all the all the while God was giving instructions to her, God had already told her your responsibility is to take care of the man of God. He had already given her instructions, but that fear even hit us. That fear will hit you. So when 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 you have allowed uh Money, when you have in your mind and you're thinking that I'm in control, that I take care of my responsibility, that I work on my job, that I do this, when you think that it's all you and not God is your provider, God is your sustainer, when you don't understand that truth, that God is your sustainer, you won't hear any instructions. You won't hear a thing. And so that's why you have to be tuned in to the Spirit of God. Tune into listening. And so key factors here, she heard the man of God. She began to listen. Although fear attacked, attached itself to her, she shut it down and she began to listen. And it was important. Apostle always says this to us. You know, we, we're constantly giving. We're giving all the time. And he says something. I'm not trying to get, take nothing from you. I'm trying to get something to you. And right here in this scripture, the man of God wasn't trying to take from her. And you would think after you read that, that he was, he was cheeky, like he said. He, she ain't even got nothing. And he's taking that little bit. That she, and then he want, he want to get fed first. Bring it to me. You know, he wasn't trying to take nothing from her. He knew something was going on along the road. He was trying to get something to her. He, she needed to get that seed in the ground. And there was a reason she needed to get that seed in the ground. Let's continue to read. So often we, uh, uh, if you, Go ahead. We, we're talking about the apostolic. Apostolic is heaven to earth, earth government. government. And so here, this man of God, it's very important for us to understand that he saw what was going on. He heard what was going on, but he held fast to the instructions that God gave him. And when you hold fast, and that was the instruction. Uh, look, don't you think that, that something was going on inside? I mean, you can't ask her. God made a mistake. Yeah. This ain't. There must be another widow woman somewhere around here that got something. <laughs> this not the one. <laughs> She's, she broke. Uh, this, this can't happen. And so he kept on. And then after she made what she said, after he told her, look, go ahead, do what you said, meaning fix your cake and everything, but go ahead and fix mine first because... I'm going to tell you why. Look at the next verse. This is why. For thus said the Lord. And notice he didn't tell her what the Lord said first. He gave her instructions first. Come on. So often we want to know the benefits before. That is not the way it works. He's going to give you your instructions. After I give you instructions, then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. So now he begins to give her the words of faith. For thus said the Lord. The God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of all fail until the day that the Lord send rain upon the earth. And after she heard that, that's what she needed to hear. See, so often we get half the instructions mm. and we never hang around for the rest of it. And so if she would have just left after the first line of instruction, go fix me a little cake for, I ain't doing that, I'm gone. She would have missed the most important part because if you do this, this is what's going to happen. It's very important for us to understand when we live in this resurrected life, there are going to be some things that the world sees as that's cold blood. That, you can't do that. Can you imagine what would happen today on Facebook? Come on. 
Did you hear what Pastor Jackson just told them people? <laughs> oh, my good! I knew he was a, a bad person. No, I am following apostolic instructions. Come on. I'm giving the instructions. I'm trying to this give something to you. This lady followed the trying instructions. Trying to give something to you. After she heard that, remember, the barrel still got the same amount of meal, and the oil is still the same. But look at what she did. And... And she went, verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Mm. And she and he and her house did eat many days. See, it wasn't about the prophet. Mm. It was about her. Amen. God said, look, I need to send somebody to sow into you so that once they sow into you, they will be sustained by that seed that they sow. And so this lady did exactly that. And of course, you know, at verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which spake by Elijah. Amen. So, go ahead. Amen. And you know, as you go on to read, it, it talks about her son. You know, so that, I believe that seed that she sowed right there, it not only sustained her for the rest of her life, her son died. And so her son was resurrected. This resurrection power, that seed took care of not only her and her son for the rest of her life, but when his body was attacked, that seed is powerful. That seed was powerful. So he wasn't trying to take nothing from her. He was trying to give something to her. Um, so many times uh, we don't even have seed in the ground. You know, you haven't even given anything. You know, a lot of people out there, they talk about money. They talk about, they haven't sold a dollar. They haven't sold $10. And talking about all they want is a dollar. They don't even tithe. And, and they all on social media talking about this and talking about that. They don't even understand. You know, so that's why it's so important that you know this word. You know God's system and God's ways of doing things, not the world's way of doing things. We live our life on seed time and harvest. We live our life on sowing and reaping. We live our life by faith. This is a life of faith. This whole life is wrapped up around faith. We believe if we sow, we're going to give. You know, and, and doesn't that remind you of our Father? Mm -hmm. Jesus so loved, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everything about God is giving. His system is giving. Um, Jesus came and he, he laid down his life for each one of us so that we can live this overcoming blessing life. It was all about us living a, that seed. Him, him, Jesus was actually the seed for us to live this life. Had not Jesus come and had not Jesus become a seed, we wouldn't be here today. Everything is wrapped up in a seed and we have to learn in, in this life that that God's system, that God's ways of doing things is our, is, it is our way of living. Notice the process. Uh, we, we, we talked about process in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, when the prophet came, she, the first part of the first thing she had to endure was, okay, I am going to follow this guy's instructions. And then she did, and lo and behold, everything happened just like the prophet told her. And so now when her son is attacked, even died, now her faith, because it had been developed and she had went through that process, she wasn't trying to bury him. She wasn't trying to do anything. She was trying to get a hold to the, Eli hey, hey, Elijah, come on, man. My son is dead. I need you to go ahead to get him back to me. And so now she was able to believe that this can happen. See, so often we never take the beginning stages in the process. So when something really, really hits, we can't believe it. We, we, can't, we can't see it. But if you start by giving yourself, then after that you become a sower. Once you start to become a sower, then everything else kind of, hey, look, I can trust you, Lord. I can believe you. If I can trust you with my money, I trust you oh, with me, gosh. so I got this. And so that is the beginning of the process. So it wasn't just about the meal. It was about the son that was going to need Elijah, the man of God. 
So God sent that man there for her, not the other way around. Amen. 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 I want to do this. Come on, give us a I'm going to read some more scriptures. All right, can I do that? Of course I can. It's my show. Glory to God. It's your show. Uh, I want to go with me right here. Uh, let's take a look at Luke. 14. Yeah, Luke 14. Amen. 26, 27. Amen. Now, this is where we, where Jesus talks about his disciples. If you want to be a disciple, these are my expectations. Luke 14. <clears throat> Man, we, we got to understand there is a right, right place for money. We got to understand that money can't rule us. It is a tool. It's a That's tool. all it is. Yes. Uh, so we, we don't be scared. I mean, they got people today that, you know, I don't believe in tithing. I don't believe in, in, in giving. Well, if you don't, you believe you, you're missing out. All right. Now, this is the. Uh, the qualifications that Jesus is talking about. This is uh, 14, John. Yeah. I'm in the right place. No, I want Luke 14. I'm sorry. I told you, John. I need Luke 14. Luke, said Luke, Luke 14. I did say 26 Luke. and 27. Okay. Yeah. Where's me? Luke 14, 21. 21 or 26. Well, I want 20, let me get it. I want Luke 14, 26 and 27, you're right. 14, 26 and 27. I'm gonna get it, just wait. Oh, I can read it out the uh, Passion if you want me to now. <laughs> Go ahead and get out the Passion and then I'm gonna get it out my King James. All right, in the Passion <clears throat> it says, when you follow me as my disciple, you must put aside your father, your mother, your wife, your sisters, your brothers. Yes, you will even, it would even seem as though you hate your own life. This is the price you will pay to be considered one of my followers. And anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own, or he cannot be considered to be my disciple. He's talking about relationships that are quote unquote the highest. I mean, my mama, my daddy, all of these relationships is secondary. So your relationship with money is secondary. Amen. All of that is secondary. It's about what he wants. And he said, look, you have to put that. If you want to be my disciple, this is the qualification. Can you handle it? Well, of course we know the, uh, the rich young ruler. No, nah, I can't handle that. So it's on the table. You decide whether or not you want to be a disciple or you just want to be somebody that's just going to make it to heaven. I just want to go to heaven, Lord. Uh, I, I can't wait to get there. But I am not going to put all of these relationships uh, secondary. That's your choice. Look at the 33. 33 echoes the same thing. It says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. Everything is secondary. Mm -hmm. Everything. He is first. Let's face it. That's what you expect. You expect him to drop everything and take care of you. You want him to do everything. So you have to understand this commitment that you're making is not a, this is a lifetime, lifetime commitment. In addition to that, it is a great commitment. I'm telling you, he will take care of mm -hmm. that widow woman. She, she had to place some things first. Look, if, that's what, if this is what you say, I'm going to do it. And then when the boy dies, she comes and says, I need you to take care of this. Well, I can trust him in all situations. Your money is just the first test, guys. Mm. It's just the first test. If you can't trust him in your finances, you can't trust him. Yeah. In, the, in the Passion 33, it says, Un likewise, unless you surrender all to me, giving up all you possess, you cannot be one of my disciples. And, and, and understanding, in my understanding, I'm understanding that I don't own it anyway. And if you take that stance, if you take that, I got this from God anyway, you won't have a problem. Um, one thing about God, he, 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 he even, the commandment is you do 10% 
and then, and you live off the the ninety percent. So God, God does not take from you. He makes your, sure you things to you. So you have to understand that the, giving up my possession is understanding that it's not mine anyway. I have that resolved on the inside of me that all belongs to God. And I have the privilege, I have the opportunity to, to, to use these things. I have the opportunity to, to live in a beautiful home, to drive in nice cars, to do all these things because, but, but I got it all from him. If it was not for him, I wouldn't even have it. And so that's when you understand that this does not have me. It says, um, it says then you can become my disciple. Becoming a disciple is a disciplined follower. Well, having money uh, or, or being able to have, use the money as a tool anyway, you have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined to understand even how to, to use money, to use it properly. And, and if you're not a sower, if you're not a giver, then usually you don't have any money anyway because your money begins to dry up. Um, there's a scripture that tells you that the canker worm, what, what scripture is that? Um, it talks about, I think it's in Malachi. Amos. Amos? No, I think it's in Malachi that the canker worm, spot that scripture back there, the canker worm. Um, uh, you've been looking that one up while you're looking that one. Let me read uh, Luke chapter 8. Okay. Uh, 1, 2, and 3. When you get it, just go ahead and let us know, and then we'll get it. Uh, That's Joel 2.25. All right, go ahead and put it up for me. Joel 2.25. Joel. 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 Yeah, we call it Joel. 2.25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, no, my great army. That's not the one. No, well, go ahead. Luke, let me get mine. She'll find hers later. Uh, and it came to pass, this is Luke chapter 8, verse 1, 2, and 3. And it came to pass afterwards that he went through, uh, throughout evening, city, uh, throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the 12 were with him. Now, I'm gonna read two and three, but I want you to understand, this is Jesus we're talking about. Jesus who fed 5,000 men, plus everybody else there were there with two fish, five loaves. This is Jesus who caught one fish and the fish had money in his mouth to pay the taxes. This is Jesus who walks on water. Now, look at what it says in verse 2. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits, it's an infirmity, of evil spirits and the infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chez, uh, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. What? You mean to tell me people was giving money, sowing money into Jesus? Why? Why? Because they appreciated what he did so to where the money just it was the least that he could do. And he received it. He received it because, all right, look, you're going to sow into me. God is really going to take care of you. So, look, even the Lord received financial contributions. So you have to understand the way they go. And it wasn't for him, per se, because let's face it. <laughs> anytime he can go ahead and he can uh, take two fish, feed 5,000, surely. Anytime the enemy comes and look, I know that if you want to, you can turn these stones into bread. Mm. So he didn't really need their finances, but he needed to make certain that he provide an avenue. Hey, you bless me, God is going to bless you. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm going to Mal Malachi um, 3. 10, but I want to read it out of the King, King James. James. Yeah. Uh, Malachi 310, let me take a look at it for 310. you. 310. That is the 
the know people what I mean? that wasn't tithing properly. Mm -hmm. All right. Three, verse 10, they built up Zion. Or you want to uh, start talking about what they did wrong? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh -uh, Malachi. 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 They refused to tithe. You robbed me and tithe an offering. Mm -hmm. Start with 10 and go on down. 10 and go down is what it says, verse 10. 10 11. They built up Zion with blood, with blood, and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof mm -hmm. judge. Malachi. Oh, Malachi. Malachi 310. Bring, all, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And when they're talking about meat, that means the word, that means the pastor. They're talking about that he could teach the word. And prove me now, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open your windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Keep going to 11. And I will rebuke, that's what I want to say. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before. The time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. In the, in the, the, the living Bible, it says, try it. Let me prove it to you. Your crops will be large, for I will guard them from insects and plague. Your grapes won't shrivel away before they ripen, says the Lord Almighty. That means you won't have more month than money if you tithe and you sow properly. You won't have more, more. You know how we have? We get paid at the beginning of the month, and all of a sudden we got all this month left over. If you sow improperly, if you give improperly, you will have more money than month. That's what is explaining in that, that scripture, understanding that God will take care of me if I do my part. That's my promise. And I've always held on to that promise that God will take care of us. In verse 12 says, and all nations shall call you blessed. Yes. For ye shall be a, a delightsome land, land, said the Lord, Lord of hosts. hosts. So that is God's promise to us. And uh, if he promised it, and if it's not to manifest in my life, it's on me. I am not doing something that he says for me to do. It's not him, it's me. Uh, if you've heard today, and uh, I, I, w I do want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and get in Amen. this. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 said that if you believe with your heart yes. and confess with your mouth yes. that God had raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he would save you. Amen. I want you to text. After I'm done praying with you, you're going to text Life Construction to 31996. But let's pray first. Say this with me. Say, Dear God, I believe with my heart, I say with my mouth, that you have raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word, salvation belongs to me. I repent of my sin, and I thank you that you've forgiven me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So welcome to the family. Welcome to welcome the family. Welcome to the family. Amen. Glory, Glory to God. To God. So don't forget to text 319, Life Construction to 31996. Amen. 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 Uh, you just, your life, you just gave your life to the master. Amen. amen. That's the first step. That's the first step we talked about tonight was giving yourself fully to Christ. Now the games begin. Amen. The, uh, you see on the bottom of your screen, it tells you the various way to give. Uh, you can always do all of those things on the screen, or you can go back to old school. You can drop a check in the mail in the envelope, then you can mail that to Post Office Box 742, Petal, Mississippi, 39465. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor, to be able to sow into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, as we sow, we've already sown ourselves to you. Yes, Lord. And because we have, this seed is all land yet. It's our appreciation. It's our thanks. It's our privilege to be able to sow. And I thank you, Lord, that everybody that's sowing, that's being obedient, they reap a harvest. 36 and 100 fold return in every single area of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Saturday, 5 p.m. I am looking for faithful, 
incorruptible, righteous men. We call that the firm. We're going to meet Saturday, the 26th, 5 p.m. It's going to be on Facebook, YouTube, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, I believe I have some information for our men. Amen. Because God is doing a great thing to men. Amen. 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 Also join us this Thursday for our um, Edifying Moments premiere. Uh, we're still talking on marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to shift back to eating right, though. Eventually. <laughs> we're going to work on eating properly. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive it in. We're going to get these bodies in shape, ladies. We're going to get these bodies in shape, men. We're going to eat right. We're going to represent the Father in everything that we do. Um, we've been having an amazing time with our uh, marriage uh, workshops. Um, the questions, the concerns, the marriage, we're hearing testimonies, um, making a difference uh, to give your whole life to God. And, and, and if you can give your marriage to the Father, oh, Lord, have mercy. God wants to give something to you. So if you can get your, give your marriage everything that you have, everything about you to the Father, that's what life is all about. There, there are times that it can't get any better. You know, our marriage, we're going, we're, we're going on 39 years. In February, it'll be 39 years. And I tell you what, it's getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Amen. 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 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one, one life, life at, at a time. time.